Thanks for joining us, guys. Uh, I have the pleasure of giving the devotion tonight. I hope you enjoyed the activity. Uh, I actually did it um, in something called the Leadership Cohort uh, with the CCO when all, a bunch of CCO staff got together and, and we did that. And it was just a wonderful experience to me, so I wanted to share it with you. So you got to make some bread, um, or at least braid some bread. Um, bread is a universal food, right? You can go anywhere within this world and you can find some sort of bread. You go to Ireland, you get Irish soda bread, right? I'm Irish, so that's the first one I mentioned. You go to India, you get naan. You go to Mexico, you get tortillas, right? You go to Germany, you get pumpernickel. You go to America, you get white bread. <laughs> white bread, uh, gluten-free bread, Pop-Tarts, I don't know. Um, <laughs> And, and the reason this is, is because it's a staple part of our meal. Uh, it, it's part of our sustenance. Almost with every meal that we have, we have some sort of bread. And it's true today as it was hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago. So the Bible actually has a lot to say about bread. There are a lot of stories about bread. Can anybody name a story in the Bible about bread without mentioning the title of my talk? Okay, that you didn't read my talk, but I'll, yes, yes. Yes, the bread of, bread of life, which I'll be talking about. <laughs> Manna in the desert, I'll also be talking about that. Were you going to say that, Sean? Yeah. Just say it again. Manna in the desert. Okay. <laughs> um, anybody else? <laughs> Loves and fishes. I'll also be covering that. I'm covering it all. Oh, every bread story. You guys are going to be here for like an hour. Just kidding. Last Supper, also covering that one. Dang, guys. Did you read this beforehand? Everybody, you guys read this? Okay, so bread is used um, as stories in the Bible, both uh, literally and figuratively. And tonight we're going to talk about, uh, focus mainly on a figurative story. Um, it is the metaphor of when Jesus says that he is the bread of life. It's found in John 6, 22 through 35. We'll have it on the screen here. Would somebody out here like to read it? Go ahead. Why don't you stand up? Oh, that's too much work. You didn't know that was part of it. I'm sorry. <laughs> on the next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples. But, oh, yes, <laughs> there's 35. So they said to him, Then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said, Jesus then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Thank you very much. <laughs> Andrew, right? Yep. Andrew, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, let's put this passage into context because plucking a verse or plucking uh, a piece of scripture out of context can actually be a very dangerous thing uh, if you put it out of context because sometimes you put your own meaning onto the passage when that's not meant to, uh, to be. So we're going to put this verse into context. So right before this event, does anybody know what happens? Zach, you said it. Yeah. 
the miracle of the loaves and fishes, okay? Um, so right before this event, Jesus performed this miracle of feeding 5,000 people. Jesus just preached um, before them, and he notices that this very large crowd is starting to get hungry, possibly hangry. You know, they're, they're starting to, to um, lose it maybe a little bit, so who knows? Uh, and, but Jesus saw this, and he wanted to feed all of them, but the problem was understandably, he could not afford to feed them all. And so he uh, sends his disciples out to kind of like scourge and, and, and find some food. And Andrew, one of the disciples, comes back with this boy. And this boy has five loaves of bread and two fishes. And Jesus prays over these loaves and fishes, and the miraculous happens. They start to multiply and multiply and multiply, so much so that all 5,000 people were able to eat. Uh, it was a miracle. It, it was amazing. And it says actually that they had so much food left over that they were able to fill 12 baskets full with extra food. So I guess one basket per disciple on their way out. And that's pretty amazing. So um, these people that Jesus fed were trying to find him, okay? They're trying to find Jesus everywhere, you know, because why? Free food, right? And they're like, they're, they're treating Jesus like he's this vending machine that just spits out bread or fish. Um, that's actually pretty disgusting sounding. Uh, wouldn't want to go to that <laughs> vending machine. Uh, I'll stick to the Pop-Tarts. So, uh, and, and Jesus is like, you know, you guys... You, you don't like me because I did this sign, this miraculous sign. You guys like me because I filled your bellies, because I gave you food. I think, I think there's a deeper hunger going on here. I think you guys need me. And the crowd responds um, with, what sign did you perform? Um, and Moses gave us this sign. He gave a sign to the Israelites in the wilderness. He gave them manna which I think was their way of saying, give us another sign, give us more food, okay? Um, what they were hinting at. But Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread of heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives us life to the world. And how do they reply? They're like, yeah, that bread sounds pretty good. I think I'll take that. I think I'll take that. And Jesus gives the famous response. He says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me shall not thirst. Which is a pretty amazing metaphor, saying I am the bread of life. And the question then arises, well, what was Jesus trying to get across here? What was Jesus trying to communicate by saying I am the bread of life? And I believe Jesus was trying to get across three things. The first thing, um, Jesus is trying to get across three things like any good pastor, three points. Here's the first one. Jesus was making a claim to deity. He was making a claim to deity. Jesus used the words, I am, here. And by using the words, I am, he was giving himself a title. That title was intentional. It was deliberate. It revealed something about the character and nature of who he was, and therefore the character and nature of who God is, okay? And this title harkens back to Exodus chapter 3 with Moses and the burning bush, Okay, so uh, Moses is out tending his flock, and he stumbles upon this bush that is on fire but is not being consumed. And then he realizes that it is God behind this fire communicating to him. So he asks him, well, what should I call you? And God responds, I am whom I am, or we know that as Yahweh. So Jesus is intentionally identifying himself with this revelation, the revelation that God gave Moses. So in other words, by Jesus using this title, this name, I am, he is proclaiming deity. And he's further expounding our knowledge of who God is. And when Jews heard this, this crowd heard this, they would have instantly recognized I am as a reference to the name of God. So the words that are used here for I am are the Greek rendering of the Hebrew word. Um, and when John, the Apostle John, is writing this, inscribing this, he, when he says these words, a claim to deity was implicit here. The point is that this is a radical, radical claim for somebody to claim to be God. So either Jesus is off his rocker, or he is who he claims to be. 
And this is one of the most remarkable statements in all of Scripture, him taking on the name of God. It's so remarkable, he does it seven times within the book of John. They're called the I am statements. So don't let anybody ever tell you that Jesus never claimed to be God because that is what he is doing right here and it can't be interpreted in any other way than as a unique claim to deity. The second thing that Jesus does, he says, I am the bread of life. But what he was hinting at here is that he was saying, I am the manna that can be found in Exodus chapter 16. So uh, the manna was the Israelites were wandering through the desert. They just left Egypt, okay? They just left Egypt after harsh slavery under the Pharaoh. They just left, and they were in the wilderness wandering around, and they were starving. So uh, God, being a good provider, provides them this mystical, mysterious substance known as manna so they would survive. So what do you think Jesus was getting at? by saying, I am the bread of life, by saying, I am the manna. This is not rhetorical. What do you think he was getting at? Mm -hmm. That is very true. God, uh, Jesus was saying here, he was saying, I am God, and I am your provider. I am God, and I am am your sustenance. I am God, and I am your spiritual nourishment. With me, you will never be spiritually hungry. With me, you will never spiritually starve. You don't need bread whatsoever. You need me, right? Another boom. That's incredible, incredible statement. And I think the last thing that Jesus was trying to get across here was an event that would happen in the future. It was an event that would happen during Passover week, right before Jesus was betrayed by his buddy, right before he was arrested, and right before he was murdered. The event was the Last Supper. So Jesus physically took a piece of bread in order to have another teaching moment, and he already dropped this big bomb on them that said, one of you is going to betray me. And we all realize that is Judas. And then he took the bread, and he gave thanks for it, and he gave it to his disciples, and they possibly started eating, and he drops another bomb on them. He says, this is my body. This is my body. And I'm sure the disciples are probably thinking, oh, here goes Jesus again with all that I am, the bread of life stuff. But then he adds something to it. He says, this is my body, what? What does he say? Yeah, given or broken for you. This is my body broken for you. And I'm sure you could have heard a pin drop here. This is my body What does that mean? Jesus doesn't exactly give an explanation here. Well, let's think back to what we were doing with that bread. What what, what do you do with the bread? You know, what do you do with the dough? You mash it up, you roll it, you knead it, you beat it a little bit, you put it into the oven, and afterwards you you consume it, you eat it. And this is what the disciples did with their bread, um, just as they always, always had since they were a little kid during the Passover, because bread was their life. Um, That's how they lived, was by bread. But now Jesus is saying something completely different. He's saying all that, yeah, this, this is me. This is my body. Because Jesus knows something is going to happen in the next 24 hours. And what is that? He knows that his body is going to be kneaded and whipped. That his body is going to be broken and he's going to be thrown in a figurative furnace. He's going to be put on a Roman execution device that was made for only uh, people who committed treason. It was made for humiliation and to set an example. And yet somehow, his broken body is going to be the source of life and sustenance, not just for him, not just for his life, but for the life of the world, for the benefit of others. 
and now we follow him, right? And we live by that bread, and we live by that broken body that has now been resurrected from the dead and Jesus Christ, right? So every time we partake in the Eucharist, the Lord's Supper, the communion, whatever you would like to call it, we ponder this symbol, the bread that represents Christ, the bread of life who will leave no one spiritually hungry. And perhaps maybe today you came here and you're feeling a little spiritually hungry and perhaps there's this longing deep with inside of you that nothing on this earth can satisfy Perhaps your morale is low, perhaps your energy is low, and perhaps you feel like you can't even go on. You just need something, you need love, you need someone. And I am saying, go to the one, the only one, Jesus Christ, Savior of the world, God incarnate, that is God in the form of man, the ruler and king over all the bread of life because his banquet table is open and he is inviting you and he wants you to sit down and he wants you to partake, to believe. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, knower of all, knower of our hearts, we know that there is no earthly thing that can satisfy us but only you, Jesus Christ, King of the world, the Savior of all. And you ask that we come before you and that we proclaim you and that we believe in you and that we follow you as disciples ourselves because we rely on your hope, dear Lord Jesus, the hope that you have promised us in the book of Revelation that one day there will be no more death or mourning or pain and one day you will come back and you will make all things new. So we rely on your sustenance and your nourishment for our spirit. Praise God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.